What's up guys, my name is ESO and welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you where to find another 5 secret weapons in Fallout 76. Since the last collection of videos I made for you guys you've been constantly tweeting me asking for another one of these guide videos so here we are. Now the weapon locations I'm going to show you guys in this video series are guaranteed spawn locations where rare weapons will appear in the game. If instead you're looking for legendary weapons with broken effects, check out my other video guide on how to farm legendary weapons. I'll link it down below in the description. That will show you how to farm the best legendary weapon effects in the game as fast as possible. But remember, being able to scavenge for some of the rarer weapons in Fallout 76 is still very important. Because in order to learn the modifications for these rare weapons, like the Assaultron Blade, you will in fact need to scrap it. Because when you scrap a weapon, you actually have a chance to learn its attachments. And again, since you cannot scrap legendary weapons, you're going to need to find these rarer weapons to unlock their modifications. Now the first weapon I'm going to show you guys is both the Assaultron Blade and the Scavenged Assaultron Head, which is a very cool unique weapon in itself. Many people also refer to it as the Eye of Sauron. But using the method I'm about to show you, we can also find the plans to make both of these weapons and also some additional modifications as well. Now in order to obtain this, you must come to the bottom right corner of the map over here, to the wonderful city of Watonga. Just here on the map, you're going to find a raised walkway on the west side of the city, which I'm highlighting with my cursor. This is where we need to go, this is basically the farming location. So as you can see, we're running along the walkway here until we come across some Assaultrons, and you're usually going to find at least five of them spawn here, and they're all spaced far enough out so you can kill them all one at a time, which makes our life a little bit easier. They all have a chance of dropping either the salvaged Assaultron head or the Assaultron blade weapons. Now even though these Assaultrons are only level 24, the level of the weapon that they drop is, is based off your level. So if you're above level 45, you'll actually get the best version of both the Assaultron Blade and Salvaged Assaultron Head, as you can see. So you can literally come here at any level and farm them and you'll just get a item appropriate to your level. But you're pretty much going to run along this walkway farming these Assaultrons and you'll probably get a few weapons per run. Then after they're all dead and you've killed them all, just server hop onto another server and all the enemies will respawn again for you to kill. It only took me about 10 minutes to get myself the Assaultron Blade and Head Plan, which you can then use to craft your own versions of these weapons. There's also a chance they're going to drop some weapon mods for the Assaultron Blade as well, such as the Electrified modification, which I found here. Now, the Assaultron Salvage Head is a really strange weapon. It basically does 70 damage, and you need to press the reload button in order to charge it up to full power. The weapon can be charged five times to reach its maximum charge, consuming a fusion cell with each time you charge it. Now it doesn't matter how fast you press the reload button, it will still take the same amount of time to reach its maximum charge. Now when you actually fire the weapon, it will let out a giant laser beam that can hit multiple targets doing over 92 damage to everyone it hits. And I've not actually calculated how much damage it does per charge, and this character also isn't energy weapon focused, so it looks like I'm not really doing much damage with it. But every time you fire the salvaged Assaultron head, it will actually give you 50 radiation, so do take care of that. We also have the Assaultron Blade though, which is a one-handed weapon with a medium attack speed and a base damage of 39. It's actually the strongest one-handed melee weapon in the game, aside from the unique legendary melee weapon, so it's definitely one you're going to want to get if you're playing a one-handed melee character. Now the third weapon I'm going to show you the location of is the 50 caliber machine gun, for all of those who like big guns. Now the first location to grab this is northeast from Vault 76 at Clarksburg Shooting Club, just here on the map. Now starting on the east side, you're going, to want, you're going to want to head to the east, further down the road here. 
You really can't miss this. You literally just follow the road and soon you'll come across a pickup truck, which you can see in the distance there. It's going to have a machine gun in the back of it. Now, sometimes somebody may have already picked up this weapon, as they did here. But don't worry if they have, you can simply serve a hop and then it will be there for you. Some people have been saying that server hopping is patched, but in this situation it still works as long as you haven't picked up the weapon in the last couple of days. So for example, if I pick up the light machine gun and then I server hop to try and get another one, it won't be there until the server resets in a few days. So as long as you haven't picked it up in the first place, you can server hop and it will respawn. And as you can see, it wasn't there for me, so I hopped onto another server and there it is. You're also going to find a duffel bag with some rare loot in the front of this truck. I actually found a fusion core in there. And then if you head over to the northeast, there's another little relay tower, a makeshift satellite here. And there's quite a few sort of ammo crates around this area with a few 50 caliber bullets that you might want to grab. There's also a small strong box to loot. And again, there's another duffel bag in the front of the car for you to grab as well. Another location you can grab a 50 caliber machine gun is north from Vault 76 near Hemlock Holes. There's some other good loot at this location too, but starting from Hemlock Holes, we're going to go south under the pylon. In the distance there you can actually see a crashed Brotherhood Vertibird poking up from the ground in the distance. We're going to make our way towards that and I'm honestly amazed that these crashed Vertibirds don't cover the wasteland considering how derpy their drivers usually are. Like whenever I see these things flying around they're just crashing into each other and it's literally retarded. But you're going to find a wooden box with a few explosive supplies but do take care of those super mutants that usually are scavenging the area here. It seems like they had the same idea as us, really. One of them also usually has a missile launcher on as well, and a few missiles, so make sure you grab that. After you've dispatched them, you'll see a makeshift relay tower and there's a duffel bag at the foot of it, which is always a good source of random rare weapons. I'm just showing you all the loot locations here, but I've already actually looted it. I just forgot to actually record myself doing so. But you often get lever action rifles, gamma rays, submachine guns and even black powder rifles from them. Now there's lots of ammo for your 50 caliber machine gun here as well. But the light machine gun itself will be located in the back of this pickup truck, which is over here. Unfortunately, I already picked it up and I forgot to record myself doing so. I do love online games. But the 50 caliber machine gun itself is a solid weapon. It burns through ammo very quickly though, so do take care that you have enough before you use or rely on this weapon for any longer amount of time. While you can easily craft 100 rounds or 50 cal bullets a pop, it's not going to last long with a fire rate of 91. But the machine gun actually has a staggering damage of 330 per second, which is absolutely huge. But the minigun does have a higher damage per second and so does the light machine gun. So it's definitely not the best big fast firing gun in the game. You can check out my other guides linked down below in the description if you want to find the locations of these other big gun weapons so you can have the best for your character. Okay, so now we have the fourth and fifth weapon locations, and I guess the sixth as well, if you include the tomahawks I'm going to be showing you. Tomahawks are, of course, the most powerful throwing weapon in the game currently, doing 100 damage each, which is just absolutely ridiculously overpowered. We can also get lots of outfits at this location as well, but most importantly, we're going to be getting the black powder weapons, including the black powder pistol and the black powder rifle both of which have the potential to one-hit kill anybody in the game. Even if they're in full power armor, it doesn't matter. This weapon is just that overpowered. In my opinion, 
stupidly overpowered in player versus player to the point of them just being flat out unfair if you're using them against other people. Since you can just kill somebody instantly even without a sneak attack it just makes it impossible to play against. But to find these black powder weapons and use them to your advantage there are two main spawn locations to come to. The first one is located here on the map at Philippi Cemetery and it's probably not really much of a secret anymore but you can grab four black powder pistols here and two black powder rifles so why not? Once you arrive near the cemetery you'll find a old wooden museum. We're just going to head inside here and you're going to find lots of display cabinets lining all of the walls. Within the display cabinets you will see the black powder weaponry. You can easily access these by simply pressing the giant red button which is impossibly hard to miss. Then you can grab yourself some black powder weaponry. But here you will also find a pre-war suit, a confederal outfit and, and lots of other cool outfits that I'll showcase to you at the end of this video. But the thing is about these outfits is that they weigh literally nothing. But yet the top hat is worth 150 caps and you can get two of them here. There's also a suit which is worth another 100 caps. So in total all the outfits I'm going to show you in this location will net you around 500 caps or so. Also the black powder rifles themselves are worth 75 caps each and the pistols are worth 40 caps. So in one visit this location is actually going to net you around 700 caps of stock to sell to the different faction vendors located all over Appalachia. You're going to find more display cabinets to open on the top floor and also on the basement level as well so literally run around the whole area grabbing everything you can. I recommend coming back every few days to this same location just to get an extra few caps. So feel free to favourite the video or subscribe so you've got it as a reference in the future. Now the final location is a bit more out of the way. It's another museum located on the far east side of the map in the middle area near this giant lake. The town is named Harper's Ferry and it's a great location to discover anyway because there's a good vendor here. But once you arrive come to the east side of town where the railway line is. From the railway you'll see the museum located on the left hand side so just head over. Within you're going to find another black powder rifle and two more black powder pistols. You'll also find some more tomahawks as well. Now as I said before the tomahawks are the best throwing weapon in the game dealing 100 damage each and considering they have zero reload time they're obviously super powerful. Once you get into the swing of actually aiming them and using them in PvP and other situations you're going to find them really helpful. They're definitely a lot more useful than grenades in player versus player because they're going to hit reliably. The black powder rifle and pistol have the highest damage in the game for their class but they also have a very long reload time. If you want a full in-depth guide on how to one hit kill any player I suggest checking out my build guide playlist linked down below in the description where I'm going to go over this weapon in a lot more detail. But it's relatively simple and it relies on a combination of different perks, armors and items. And now guys I'm going to showcase all the outfits we found at the other location. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you actually did find it helpful Please go ahead and subscribe and press the bell icon. I do a lot of top 5 videos for Fallout 76 and also useful build and perk guides. If you want to watch more content right now though, check out my playlist linked down below in the description. I have a playlist on each category. I like to keep things very organized for you to easily find what you're looking for. But thanks very much for watching me ESO and I will see you guys in the next Fallout 76 video. Goodbye.